All right, we're working on the kinetics lab, and this is the clock reaction. So what we're going to do is figure out how fast a reaction goes, and we're going to look at how it depends on the concentrations that we start with. Clock reaction gives us a second reaction that slows down the first one so that we have enough time to click the stopwatch and see the color change. So what happens with this is that our original reactions, this is our original reaction right here. That's what we're going to measure. But in order to slow it down, because we wouldn't be able to, it would just turn right away. We couldn't tell it's so fast. So we're going to do a side reaction, and that means that as soon as that iodine is, re is released, when it forms, it's going to get used up by the IO3. Now, as, as soon as we form any iodine, or I2, then we see the color change. So that iodide is going to get used up, and it's going to form the iodine here. As soon as that iodine forms, then we're going to see it change the color. Right, so this is our time. That's going to tell us how much iodine was used. Just working backwards, that will also tell us how much IO3 was used. When we change the concentration of IO3 minus, we know how much was there and we know the time, so we can figure out how long it took to make that change. So the clock reaction just uses up the product until one of them is gone. So it gives us a little bit of delay so that we can measure the reaction time. We're going to check out how the concentration of the reactants affects the time. And we're going to take a look how the temperature affects the time. So in order to do this, we are going to make two solutions, our two stock solutions. Stock solution A. And then we have stock solution B. Those are our two solutions. One is the sodium bisulfite and the other is potassium iodate. So in part A, we're going to make that sodium bisulfite. And this is what you did in your pre-lab. So you have to calculate the mass of the sodium bisulfite before you can start. Then we're going to go down, and this is to make solution B. And this, again, is from the pre-lab you have to figure out how much, calculate the volume of the original. Point 0.1 is the more concentrated one, and then this is going to be your stock. Okay, so you have two solutions that you'll make, and from them you're going to do a bunch of repeated runs. We're going to take 10 milliliters of each solution, 10 milliliters of A, and remember the AND is going to mean that you're adding those together. And then you're going to take 10 mils of solution B. So that's your two solutions, 10 mils of 10 mils. How much is your total volume? What is your V2 in this case? We took 10 milliliters of stock A. We added it to 10 milliliters of stock B. How much is our total volume now? 20 milliliters. In this whole experiment, we're going to keep the total volume the same. So each time, we're going to take solution A, 10 milliliters, solution B, 10 milliliters together, and now they diluted each other. So the concentration right in that moment, when they're put together but before the reaction started, just a brief moment, their uh, concentrations diluted each other. So our initial concentration has a total volume of 20. All right, now in this second part for trial four, we begin using less of one of the solutions, but we add two milliliters of water. So we have eight milliliters of uh, solution a plus 2 milliliters of water, and then we're going to add it together with 10 milliliters of solution uh, B. Here we're changing the concentration 
of solution A. So let me just do a side calculation here. What is the molarity of solution A in that new volume? That's going to be M1, V1 over V2. So what is that? That's 8 milliliters of A times your molarity divided by what? 20 milliliters total. Now in the next step, we're going to take 5 milliliters. So that's 5 milliliters of solution A plus 5 milliliters of water plus 10 milliliters of solution B. So again, V2 equals what? So this is set up to make 20 milliliters every single time for every trial. So we're changing the concentration of the reactants and looking at how that affects the speed of reaction. So we're going to be using the dilution equation again and again. All right, on the last one, we're going to do some temperature studies. So we're going to use that same original amount, 10 mils of each, and then we're going to compare when we heat up and cool down the reactants. First, we're going to heat them in a water bath, and then we're going to put them in an ice bath. Molarity 1 will be always 0 0.0200, right? In those calculations yes. that you wrote before. So we're going to make our stock solutions. So in stock A, this one is the sodium bisulfite, and then the other one is per iodate. Okay, so this is our reaction table for the trials. Here we have our volumes and the molarities of stock A, solution A. And then here we have the volume and the molarity of stock B. So you see we add water to make sure the total volume is 20 every single time. Okay, and then we have our warm bath and our cool bath. So this is where I want you to pay particular attention to what it's asking for. This is the molarity and the molarity in the 20 milliliters. Okay, so you see I'm still looking at these by bisulfite is in orange and iodate is in green. And then your time. These ones here, these are the ones in your reaction mixture. Uh, the ones up here are your stock solution. Okay, so as you calculate each one of these in here, use this equation, the M1V1 equation, using the stock solution, your stock molarity, and the amount that you used. 10, 5, or 8 milliliters. So once you have all of this together, you will see whether the time depends on the concentration. How does the time compare to the rate? The rate is usually 1 over the time. So that means that if the time goes up, what happens to the rate? The rate goes down. So be careful with your language. Sometimes when students answer these questions, they mix up rate and time, and then their answers become wrong. Just pick one. Either talk about the times or talk about the rates, but sometimes students will mix those together, and I just wanted to call your attention that if it takes a long time, then the rate is slow. If it's very quick, then the rate is fast. Short time is a faster rate. All right, and then the other note for these guys, I would say, is to make sure that you talk about collision theory. Do you remember how we talked about collisions? Make sure you talk about the collisions. So that's in Chapter 14. We did that in class in Chapter 14. The data analysis is from the actual mass. So which one? Uh... If you're doing this in the lab by yourself, you know, individually, here's your calculated value. So this one is the answer to the pre-lab. But then maybe you use actual value. But you're just going to use the answer to the pre-lab. Is we're going to use the balanced one or the calculated one? We're going to assume 
that you use that that answer to the pre-lab. Okay, so what I wanted to do was talk about the simulator. And there's lots of instructions in here. Here I think I talk about the 20 mils. Notice the final volume is the same in each trial. Part three uses different volumes. But let's take a look at so one of the difference on the simulator that's different from our lab instructions is the total volume. So you saw how our total volume is set to be 20 each time because it's, you know, we're working in a little beaker, stirring, stirring, stirring. But in this one, it's set to be 100 each time. We have our two reactants and then our potassium iodide is the, to keep the volume the same. So we can start with um, total volume has to be 100. So let's see. We'll do it at 25 degrees. Water to dilute it. 10 milliliters of one reactant. 30 milliliters of the other. And then 12 milliliters of filler. So let me start this. So we put that in. We put in one reaction. Put in the other. Oh, I have to click the timer. All right, now they're in there. So I'm going to time it. And our reaction in the lab usually takes about 40 seconds, which is a long time. Oh, 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 stop. All right, so we got 19 seconds for that one. So in our experiment, we got about 40 seconds usually, and we did the first trial three times. But now I'm going to change how much. I'm going to, um, I'm going to reduce this by half. Now, if we were doing a truly virtual lab, you would write down that time, and that would be your data. But I'm giving you data for our lab. So I reduced this by one half, and then I'm going to increase my volume of water. So I think it needs to go to here to give me 100 total. So in this simulation, we're using the same amount of reactant with starch on this side. We're only changing the other one. So what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to go faster or slower? Or do we just want to watch? So I just clicked the timer right when it put it all together, and we reduced the concentration of one of the reactants. This is like trial six of our run. Oh yeah, so look at that. I reduced the reaction by half, the, the reactant, by one half, and I got almost double the time. Now we could do it, let's change the temperature here. Oh, I gotta reset it first. I'm gonna change it to the warm one. Now we're doing the temperature study, and it went back to the original solution, which is the same as the way our lab is designed. So I'm gonna click Start. Once all the solution's in there, then I have to click the stopwatch. All right, and stirring, stirring, stirring. In the lab, you just have to stir the whole time. Whoa! So that one went really fast. So we see the same kind of thing in our data here. All right, this is the data you should write down. So copy this data into your, your notebook, and then there's one question in this to give a point for getting the data.